second biggest German airline, Condor. $150, that is dirt cheap. Two things I don't like, that Andy crew is very, very nice. Have you ever used them? <laughs> <laughs> and now you're out of beef, right? Yeah. Yes. No. no? Okay. <laughs> and they had goats in the cabin as well. All I have now is Airbus or Boeing, you know? The adventurous days. Now, if you work for Malaysia Airlines, please take some notes. They're gonna introduce flat bats and a brand new cabin. So guys, hello and welcome to another flight report. Right now I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm about to fly the second biggest German airline, Condor. They recently took over that title since Air Berlin vanished from German skies, and they're considered one of the biggest leisure airlines in the world. So today I'll be testing their 767 in business class from Phoenix to Frankfurt, flight time around 11 hours in business class. Um, I have very little idea what to expect today, um, but I know that I'm flying on a 767, which I'm very excited about, because I remember in 2015, I took my very first flight on a 767 on an airline that only had four by that time and now replaced them with 777s and I want you to guess which airline that was so let me know in the comment section below um, so let's gonna we're gonna head to the gate um, I have lounge access as well but I don't have the time actually to check out the lounge um, but I'm sure it's gonna be all right um, so let's go to gate B22 and find out what the German leisure giant is all about So oh, this is it on board Condor's um, business class, which comes in a two, two, two configuration with 30 seats in total. And the first thing you notice is that they don't go completely flat. It's like an angled flat back. And now let me give you a quick little tour of the seat. As I said, like it's a forward facing seat. You've got a screen right in front of you. A manager kit is already here as well. So we're gonna have a proper look once we airborne. Got some magazine here, some storage space, a universal power outlet. Here's the remote to uh, operate the uh, entertainment system right in front of you. And you get uh, noise cancelling headphones as well as a blanket and a pillow. And there you go, those are the seat controls. So flight is full pretty much. I think every seat here in business class is taken as well as an economy class. I um, also just received my welcome drink, so let's see uh, what the next 11 hours have in store. So when I checked in, I was told that the business class is half empty, but the gentleman next to me said he paid $150 <laughs> and got upgraded. So if you are flying with Condor in economy class and you want to upgrade, um, $150, that is dirt cheap. So um, always try to ask at the check-in counter if they don't happen to have uh, a full business class that maybe works out. All right, so if you travel business class with Condor, you can choose a couple of magazines, uh, Focus, Stern, like, and then. Uh, we got a sports newspaper as well. Unfortunately, they're all in German. So if you, uh, if you happen to be an English speaker, there won't be any, any newspapers for you. However, if you're German, they will provide you a lot of reading material. So they give me like four magazines worth like 20 euros. <laughs> so, and there we go. This is the amenity kit Condor offers on their long haul flights. And it is definitely a very interesting pouch, especially the material. What do you reckon? 
it's like <laughs> yeah some weird foam ish and then you have like a plastic back in there so you can like actually open all those buttons here you can unbutton that and then you've got the amenity kit right in there and let's see what we have inside so the all-time classic uh socks i never used them have you ever used them <laughs> eye shades earplugs a toothbrush that's it there's no lip balms certainly a very interesting pouch exactly i actually think that the pouch is actually more expensive than the entire content i mean we're both freaking flyers but we haven't come across an amenity kit like this <laughs> I mean, it's interesting, it's a nice design, but like... Yeah, so. <laughs> it's magic, right? That's what it is, that's magic. All right, so we've been airborne for half an hour. They just handed out uh, the menus, which I'm gonna talk you through later once the food arrived. Uh, they give out roasted nuts, as well as drinks, um, so wait for the food service to start they're gone in america no american airline is like flying the 747 anymore shame such a beautiful bird i mean i'd say a lot of them are aviation geeks you know so they know a lot about uh the industry and there's a lot of uh viewers who are business travelers for example as well because i compare a lot of business products as well and then there's, there's a lot, like people have a general interest in aviation, I'd say. You don't really need to be like a freaking flyer or a geek. Um, and there's people who've never flown any, like in their life, and they watch my channel, you know. They watch me fly and they say it's like they're taking a journey because it feels like, you know, they can relate. Constellations. Constellation. Oh, Jesus. Super Connie. Super Connie. <laughs> yeah. Lufthansa was flying them. Oh, like, oh my god, like don't tell me about these things. I, 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 I get like super jealous because <laughs> all I have now is Airbus or Boeing, you yeah. know? And you've been you've been flying it all. Like you've been in uh, the Super Constellation, DC3, MD11, DC whatever, like you name it. 7, 707 probably as well, right? Oh, many 707. Oh, Jesus. Many yeah. 707. That was, I mean, that was the aircraft for a long time. That exactly, exactly. Yeah. Until, the, until the, the 747 was introduced. That is, wow. I wish I could time travel, yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but then I have, I have subscribers who tell me about their stories flying in Russia back in the days when they had those Ilyushins and triple laps. Oh, and you would never know, you would never know whether you make it alive. Uh, one of my subscribers, he said he was flying like via Russia, or via Moscow to, to Bangkok or whatever. He said there was a guy sitting on a chair in front of the cockpit of, the Kalash of a Kalashnikov, you know, just as a security guard. And they had goats in the cabin as well. <laughs> like, well I haven't flown with goats, I've flown with chickens. The good old days. <laughs> yeah. The good old days, right? And I, like, the adventurous days. Why so. without, without a door? <laughs> <laughs> but it was the first, like, non-stop transatlantic flights. I think we are in the super constellation, right? Yeah, they were. Yeah. Right, yeah. And I've heard they were like, there was always at least one engine dysfunctional. That's what I've heard. Like well, my first flight did two engines. <laughs> we because they had Salt Lake City to fix them. Yeah, 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 but yeah. But the thing is, they fixed them, and you got back on the same, you didn't get off the plane. Yeah. They fixed them, you took off again. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we lifted off from Oxford, and then we were flying along, the plane started doing this. Uh. You could hear one engine revving up. All right. The plane would twist the Yeah, air, right. Yeah, right. Just yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay, we're flying along. This is what's going on. Right? Yeah. No announcement from the pilot. No nothing. Right. We're going through the air like this. Right? Jesus. <laughs> I bet you they're out of choice. Hey, you... What would you like for main course? Do you have a beef? Yes. Of oh. course. <laughs> and now you're out of beef, right? Yes. yes. No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Beef. 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 <laughs> I bet she was out of starters. That's right. <laughs> and we got the starter. So we have scallops, some duck with some mushrooms, some, some sort of salad, as well as cheese. And it comes with a salad, garlic bread, a bun. That looks like cheese. We've got the dressing. 
Yeah, presentation looks quite nice, so let's see what it tastes like. So the scallop actually is pretty good. I didn't like the shrimp because there was wasabi on there. I'm not a big fan. The salad looks really sad though. So the main just arrived is the beef tenderloin. Comes with asparagus, some vegetables, and wedges. So. Is it a phoenix? So the steak was pretty nice, the main was not too bad, and now the dessert arrived. So chocolate mousse with like some strawberries and raspberries and uh, a cone. So yeah, that's pretty nice though. You like it? It's good, eh? Yeah. Not too bad, eh? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah exactly. You could, you could work on that presentation, but it tastes really nice. Pretty good. Yeah. So dinner service was wonderful. I was really impressed by the portion and the quality of the food. I uh, really loved it and the crew is very, very nice. Uh, they're very friendly, very passionate. Uh, they make some jokes here and there, so that is very pleasant. Um, now, since I've familiarized myself a little bit with the seat, um, there is two things I don't like. The first thing is there is no USB here. So you can't charge your device. The power outlets you have here, the universal ones, they ain't working, which is a little bit of a bummer because I need to charge my phone. It's a very lovely product, um, considering uh, it's a uh, leisure airline. Next, I'm gonna uh, show you the entertainment system. And let's see what we have in there. I also think that this plane is Wi-Fi enabled. That's what it at least set on Seat Guru. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna demonstrate you how the bed is going flat. Or not flat, like it's an angled 170 degrees flat bed. So the first thing you will probably notice when it, when it comes to the in-flight entertainment, that the screen in front of you does not have a touch screen function. Operate it, you need this tiny remote control here and it kind of works like a cursor. To operate it, you can see I have that little cursor. There's just been an announcement night that you can uh, purchase duty-free um, goods if you want. And uh, when I checked in, um, I was given a lounge uh, invitation and this large invitation is, uh, also works as a voucher. So if you don't go to the bout, uh, if you don't go to the lounge, uh, you can use this invitation as a 20, 20 euro voucher. So you can purchase goods on this flight, which I think is a pretty cool idea. So you have 63 movies in total, a few new releases like Bohemian Rhapsody, The National Blockbuster, some Disney movies as well. 132 in total, as you can see right here. So there's comedy, documentaries, drama, food, kids, lifestyle, music, arts, nature, short films, and sports. Yeah, well, that's the in flight entertainment of um, Condor, which also comes with those noise canceling headphones. Which I'm going to try and now I'm going to show you what the bed looks like once you go flat or angled, angled flat. All right, so let's see what it looks like when we go angled flat. All right, I think the last time I had an angled flat bed was on Aeroflot. It is very angled towards the end, but otherwise. We'll see what the sleeping experience is going to be like on here. Um, yeah, but that's what it looks like. The service is done. Pretty much everyone in the cabin gets ready to sleep. And the cabin crew is giving out some bottles of water. Something I always appreciate. So, good morning entering uh, 
Scottish airspace and uh, considering it was an angled flatbed I slept pretty well for probably like five six hours straight um, and now it's time for breakfast I reckon that's an omelette uh, cold platter like cheese and uh, the tomato and stuff and then uh, we also got fruit salad a bun as well as a croissant nice coffee and fresh orange juice so it's pretty good so just finished breakfast like one hour and 15 minutes to go until we land in Frankfurt um, Breakfast was great, They're lovely, and as I said earlier, the crew is wonderful. They're so passionate about their job, like genuinely loving it. And uh, like last night, a great example, like the, the couple sitting uh, in, in front of us, their um, in-flight entertainment was, wasn't working. And uh, like, now if you work for Malaysia Airlines, please take some notes. Um, first of all, they were like very, very eager to try to fix it which didn't work um, and then uh, as a compensation they offered them a hundred euro voucher for like duty free items or like for your next flight booking I'm not 100% sure but that couple was like no no it's you're fine don't worry about it but the crew literally insisted that they take it because they were so apologetic about it and they really wanted to make up for it and make sure that they still have a great journey so um, this is just like what a crew should be and I was so impressed and um, you know things things can be dysfunctional or like screens might be broken in final game and whatever it can happen you know that is natural but however um, it is how you how you come back as an airline as a crew like and that is that is that was a prime example yesterday of how to solve an issue and still have I'm sure that they get off that airplane with a huge smile because uh, the crew didn't really like they really seem to care um, so big thumbs up to that uh, condo crew is incredibly amazing so you guys are probably wondering what the configuration is on the 767 um, as I said in business class it's 222 with like 30 seats in total but they only use 28 because the, the one in the first row, the first two, are used as a crew rest for the pilots. And then I think you have 35 seats in premium economy class and 180 in, uh, in economy in a 232 configuration, which is very comfortable to travel in um, from my experience. But uh, yeah, that's the conf uh, configuration of Condor. Um, also, they're going to a renewal of their fleet very soon so they're like um, thinking about either getting the 330 Neo to replace the 767 or the Dreamliner and then from there they said they're gonna introduce flat bats and a brand new cabin so because the average age actually of Condor's fleet is around 24 years so um, I think it's a little bit time to like especially uh, replace their uh, wide body planes the 767 which have been in service for uh, quite some time with uh, with Condor so uh, in the future in the very near future they probably will announce when because actually also uh, Condor is on sale um, so once I guess they have a new investor or a new owner they will get their hands on new airplanes uh, and uh, the CEO earlier this year announced that it's either going to be the 330neo or the Dreamliner um, yeah interesting times uh, ahead for this wonderful airline and this was my trip on Condor which is probably the best leisure airline I've ever flown great service amazing cabin crew their passion is unmatched and it's literally a friend making airline thank you so much Bill for joining the fun it was great meeting you and if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button subscribe to my channel there's so much more coming and as always thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comment section below what you think of the German airline Condor I've enjoyed it very much. 
and you should give it a try too.